we've been a signatory since the beginning. Uh, we reported both years. Uh, 2011 was an interesting year because we actually got to 58% uh, within the 60% target. So we were within 2% of the target of 2030. Um, and we knew at the time that that was going to be an anomaly. We had a net zero high rise going, we had a 450,000 square foot deep retrofit in an existing building, another 250,000 square foot retrofit in an existing building that was deep. And so we had an, an, an anomaly of uh, building portfolio. And so this year we went from 58 to 50, which is still, I think, across the national average quite good, but it's nowhere near where we want to be. So it's a really interesting place we find ourselves right now and that we're all pushing to get to the 2030 challenge. I think some of the best performing firms in the country are not getting there, and we're only a fraction of a fraction. And it's hard collecting the data. And I would say that what the data reveals is that no one is doing a very good job at this, not across the broad landscape of the entire industry. And that certainly is true of us as well. And it isn't because we don't have our heart in the right place. It's a lot of it is just the circumstances of the system that we're in and how work is executed. It's, it is extremely difficult to achieve the AI 2030 challenge, and that's perhaps one of the most significant learnings of it. And I know that what we have to do is we have to get after the right strategies from the very beginning. We have to really work on load reduction. But frankly, we've got, we've got some challenges just in terms of the way, what we expect from our buildings. Sort of the, the last um, 10 to 15 percent of energy efficiency, if you're trying to, to cut, cut from from a, a normal building down to 60 to 80 percent efficient, um, you can't get there unless you um, have some some pretty uh, aggressive ways to monitor and report and, and control your own energy use at your desk. You know, there's there's the design energy use intensity, but you know, there's only so much control we have. Once you get into plug loads, and depending on the companies that are moving into these buildings, um, you need to really work on the leasing structures. They could start to require participation in the challenge as fundamental, fundamentally part of uh, submitting for AI awards. For, we've, we've done that in Portland. In Portland, the AIA um, Committee on the Environment has been actually documenting that stuff. We haven't yet required it, uh, and in fact, when we tried to require it, it almost formed a little bit of a revolt. But I think that's interesting. We need to have those discussions. I think if it were to come from AIA National, uh, we would have less and less resistance. And it goes back to transparency. If you actually link it, the more we all know what each other are doing, the more we all know how each other's buildings are actually performing, the less we will spend time talking about how good we think we are or not, or how bad we think others are or not, and we'll just start talking about how things actually are. And when we do that, we'll actually have a lot more levers to pull about making things better.